Hello and welcome to The Works. I'm Ben Peltier. And I'm Ben Che. In today's show, we talk to two artists from Pakistan, Imran Qureshi and Aisha Khalid, who in a new exhibition at the Hong Kong Arts Centre, show how they give their own modern twist to the ancient art of miniature painting. From that ancient tradition, we go to a very contemporary art form with the work of Jennifer Steinkamp. Jennifer is a Los Angeles-based artist who has been working in digital media for over 20 years and is also known as a pioneer in the field of 3D animation. In our studio, we'll be celebrating Cool Britannia as trumpet player Christopher Moyce and pianist Jacqueline Leung give us a taste of the concert they played at the Academy for Performing Arts yesterday. But we start by looking at a program organized by the St. James Settlement Rehabilitation Services that gives one group of very special people, individuals facing mental challenges, the chance to make art out of clay. For the past 15 years, the St. James Settlement has been encouraging its mentally challenged members to practice ceramics as part of their rehabilitation. Not only do they learn the craft through workshops and training, their works are also exhibited and sold, both in Hong Kong and overseas. Ceramic artist Zi Wai Ling has been a volunteer on the project since it began. At the Pottery Workshops Taiping Sand Street Gallery until the 4th of March is an exhibition that includes signature smiling clay figures and musical instruments produced by 23 members of the St. James Ceramic Workshop. Hoi Pak is one of the senior members. Oh, Kudo 在這裡我學習了一件事,如果給我自己,我就會在這裡停步。那麻煩又要換搖,又要整些那麼大很容易燒爛,我好多這些考慮,那我就會限制了我自己的創作空間。但對於會員,他覺得這些不是問題。
its workshop on Hollywood Road. Caroline herself now spends much of her time in her workshops in Jingdezhen, Shanghai and Beijing. Hong Kong is where she started, but she doesn't see much of a future for ceramics here. Yan 跟住景德鎮已經是成為了全世界最大的投資中心。我們想用多點不同的方法來燒野,都其實我們可以做。咁喺喺大陸係好多地方可以做呢樣嘢。Artist Jennifer Steinkamp is currently holding her first solo exhibition in Hong Kong at the Lehman Malton Gallery. She creates digitally rendered animations that capture the movements of the natural world and that are then often projected into architectural surroundings. It's a blending of the latest technology and the natural. Video art has been around since the camcorder became available. And of course animation since probably the 30s and 40s. I became interested when I took a course at Caltech in Pasadena taught by Gene Youngblood, he uh, wrote a book called Expanded Cinema. He uh, discussed structuralist cinema in the book and um, some of the first computer animation created by artists. And those were works from the 70s and 80s. When I saw that work, I, I just, I knew this is what I have to do. And I actually dropped out of school uh, to, to work in computers so I could learn it because that was in the early 80s and there were no personal computers that you could buy so you really had to learn somewhere where they had you know where you could get access to computers. The first time I used plants in an artwork it was in response to 9-11. The United States was attacked by terrorists who were from Saudi Arabia and I thought it was really odd that we were attacking Afghanistan. At the time, if you were against uh, going into war, you were considered a terrorist yourself. So I made this artwork using flowers to symbolize peace. And that way I could be patriotic and uh, hopefully convey my message. In this piece called Diaspora, after I came to Hong Kong for a visit last year, I became interested in tumbleweeds as a subject for this. In researching tumbleweeds, I came across the word diaspora, which is a, a, a term used for plants. As the tumbleweed um, rolls around, it leaves its seeds and creates new life. And, and also, it actually uh, coincided with the Chinese New Year. So. All these things, uh, a piece that's about creating life and death and then, you know, coming back again. It just made sense on so many different levels. The other piece is called Bouquet, and it was made for uh, the American consulate in Guangzhou. Uh, it's basically a giant bouquet of trees. So I suppose I made it for you know a giant, which is China, and it's it's a uh, rather than flowers, it's trees. So it's kind of funny.
We'll be back after the break. See you then. Welcome back. Artists all over the world have painted miniatures. They were even particularly popular in Britain in the Elizabethan era. But in Asia, the art form reached new heights during the reign of the Mughal emperors, who ruled present-day Pakistan and India between the 16th and 19th centuries. These small paintings were not meant to be displayed on the wall, but in smaller albums. Miniature painters worked in workshops under the tutelage of masters, and often each specialized in different aspects of painting. Borders, figurative work, landscapes, palace interiors, or calligraphy. Today, some artists have broken away from such specialization and are making the miniature painting a much more personal and current art form. Miniature painting is also one of the special area of fine art. And I found it very interesting because it was, technically it was completely different. Um, its material, its uh, preparation of materials, it was very organic. It was like really something which so much attached with nature or natural things. One of Pakistan's best-known artists, Imran Qureshi, began last year with an award from the Deutsche Bank for Artist of the Year. His works have been shown all over the world. He's particularly known for his miniatures, in which he brings a contemporary sensibility to a traditional Islamic art form. But his work also goes beyond the miniatures. In this third exhibition in Hong Kong, he's also showing large-scale paintings. Red, for me, it was the color of happiness. And then I was using it in other political sense. Red is referring back to the blood. And the foliage emerging out of red is about hope or life. I think it's wonderful. It's always a pleasure to exhibit my work in Hong Kong. I'm showing most of the time in West, uh, but showing in this region where I also belong, like. We all are from Asia-Pacific region, and I think people have different kind of understanding with the work, and they are really emotionally attached uh, with the work, which is wonderful. Aisha Khalid, who says she grew up in a traditional family, likes to focus on issues of gender, aesthetics, the role of women, and power relationships between the East and the West. Her work on show at the Art Center, When I Am Silent, features a series of paintings exploring her spiritual journey. Khalid juxtaposes decorative surfaces with social and political messages that will be controversial to some. Aspect of my work is the beauty, which initial when you uh, give a first look to the work, it's, you just get the beauty out of that. But then there is a strong um, comment on uh, political uh, and social things. There is a stereotype image. Um, a lot of things people um, think about when they listen from Pakistan, from the media, mostly they are negative things. The Pakistan is not, or not at all like that. There are some places there could be conflict, which every place has that. But overall, society is a very open society and open-minded people. I never got that any problem to being as a woman and in Pakistan showing uh, artwork, which is commenting on the social issues and also political issues. It's a political um, comment in this work as well as there is some spiritual aspect because the black is coming from my work of series where relating it with the spiritual journey as an infinite space also. So here the tulip appearing as a, a beauty, as a positive thing. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I am using them as my self-portrait. The root is always hidden and you don't see it, you don't even think about it, and that's a reality, but that's a reality which, without that, you can't get the flower and the other things. So just to show that importance of that.
The works of Imran Qureshi and Aisha Khalid are presented at the Hong Kong Art Centre by Gandhara Art until the 28th of February. Yesterday evening, the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts celebrated Cool Britannia with a recital of British music for trumpet and piano, performed by Christopher Moyce and Jacqueline Leung. The concert also featured trumpet students from the Academy. The combination of trumpet and piano isn't one you may have heard before. But today, Christopher and Jacqueline are in a studio and they're talking to Ben Peltier. Well, Chris and Jacqueline, it's a delight to have you on. Um, what brought you two together initially? Well, um, we figured out that we were studying at the Royal Academy of Music at the same time as each other, but we didn't actually meet until we were attending a alumni event of the Royal Academy of Music Alumni Association in Hong Kong, which Jacqueline is chairperson of, and, and we'd organised a, or she'd organised a dinner that we were both yeah. attending. So, yeah. and and there's a special award associated with the Royal Academy, right? Yeah, we were very surprised last February to receive a letter from the Royal Academy of Music um, saying that we'd been uh, both elected as associates of the Royal Academy of Music, which is offered to alumni who have made um, a certain significant contribution to the field. So we felt very honored and we felt, oh, maybe we should do something together. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you both. Thank you. And it seems a natural progression then that when the two of you came together to put together a recital, yeah. that you, you chose music of English composers. Mm -hmm. uh, how did the recital go? Well, we were pretty happy, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah we weren't totally sure mm -hmm. if we'd be able to get together enough pieces by um, composers from England, but in the end we, we felt we had a pretty diverse and interesting program and um, we're pretty happy with how it turned out. What mm -hmm. did you find in terms of the music? Um, it was pretty interesting because um, there wasn't too much written originally for piano and trumpet, so we had to search long and hard and so we placed some transcriptions, some which were originally for piano and trumpet. So um, there were challenges about, you know, on how to uh, play the part or which ones are more pianistic or not. So you had to pick and choose, but it was really fun. <laughs> what sorts of uh, specific composers and time periods were represented? Well, we were able to draw upon um, two of the very well-known composers from the Baroque period in England, so Henry Purcell and George Frederick Handel both wrote original works originally for trumpet and strings actually but um, with good transcriptions for the piano that Jacqueline was able to uh, 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 do very well for us and then um, in England there was a uh, kind of 200 year period where there wasn't really a composer of significance from the time of Purcell and Handel uh, probably the next uh, great English composer that came along was Edward Elgar in the tail end of the 19th century, which also coincides with a gap in the trumpet's own solo repertoire, also just generally worldwide. So there's quite a big jump from the Baroque time until we get to the 20th century. Right. Well, no recital of, uh, of uh, British uh, trumpet music would be complete without a nod towards the brass band. What did you guys include? Well, um, <laughs> we found a piece that was written for uh, James Watson, who was um, my professor at the Royal Academy of Music, a very beautiful piece called Rutland Water by Malcolm Bennett, which is kind of very lyrical in style, just like a cornet player like James Watson was. Mm -hmm. Also, we found a theme and variations cornet solo. And of course, like you say, no British recital would be truly complete without uh, a good old cornet solo and theme and variation style. The uh, theme in this case is actually based around an old um, Victorian song called Rule Britannia. Um, and we did not want people attending the recital to think this was at all political. <laughs> it was just, uh, just to happen to be a nice British song that we thought we'd include. And yeah. that kind of influenced uh, the title we gave the recital mm -hmm. called Cool Britannia, <laughs> kind of pun on Cool Britannia, that kind yeah. of thing. Oh, very well done. Uh, yeah. What can we convince you to play a bit of music from here in the studio? Well, we're going to bring you some music from William Lloyd Webber, who's the father of very well-known Andrew Lloyd Webber and Julian Lloyd Webber. Yeah, and uh, we're going to play his suites in F major. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. 